know you're still pissed at me about all the bonehead things that I've done lately, but I need your help. Adriana has this, uh... What, what are you doing? I'm packing. I'm out of a job. Hey. Hey. I got your note. I thought maybe we should do breakfast up here. Yeah, I like the idea. I like it up here. Which one of us had the worst week? I went looking for Todd's kid and got arrested for murder. You danced the Lombada with an SUV. Despite your head wound, I think I win. How are you? Well, I'm better now that I'm out of jail. Is this nightmare ever going to end? Actually, Spencer's reign of terror is almost over. Well, well, well. Look at what we have here. Spencer, I shot and killed a man. I'm guilty. No amount of help is going to change that. Better be calling a cab. Todd! When did you get home? Last night. Yeah, you probably missed it out with your boyfriend. Yeah, I moved back in. steps up and they take his word over yours. The mayor says that he's going to appoint a temporary commissioner sometime later this week. This doesn't make any sense. What, what, what about a motive? Anybody bother to ask why you would even care about setting up Manning? I'll tell you, boss, the motive really isn't much of an issue because Manning and I do have quite a history. What's important here is that all these charges, they're bogus, and I'm going to beat them. It's just a matter of time. How can they force you out after everything you've done for this town? Wait, is Hughes the one driving this? No. This is my call. Look, after everything that happened with Colson, the last thing that Landview needs is another high-profile uh, scandal going on, all right? I talked to the mayor, and on the phone I could even hear in his little voice that he was really sweating bullets. He was going to make a move, so I just beat him with a punch, that's all. This is messed up. I know, but that's why it's important that I step back now. Because the longer this takes, the uh, the harder it's going to be to really focus on finding out who framed Manny. Spencer Truman. Damn him. Balsam, you let the police handle this. I'm not going to sit back and let Truman do this to you. You know what? I thought you had a lot on your plate right now. What, Claudia Reston? She doesn't have uh, enough work for you to do? Okay, I know you're not happy that I'm working for her, but it's a one-time deal. She was going to hire somebody. At least this way, I know what she knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When are you going to learn not to get burned by trying to work both ends, huh? There's no way I'm going to let her hurt your family. Yeah. You know what? I wish I could believe that. Look, it is killing me that I let you down. Okay, and this, you having to step down, it's just not good. It's temporary, that's all. It's just beyond unfair. Not to mention bad news for this whole town. Especially me. I really need your help. So you have something else that I need to know about, right, Balsam? Okay. 
Okay. I know, this is a butterfly, but what is this? Somebody left it for Adriana. Right after he attacked her. What are you doing? I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean to startle you. You scared me. It's just that I, I, I saw you from the window out here alone, looking so forlorn. Is there something wrong? Honey, you're shaking like a leaf. It could be a lot worse next time. I am not taking a chance. What about my mother, Rex? She found out about this. Hey, we can't handle it on our own anymore. It's gotten way too big. Okay, talk to me. You're right, something is wrong. Is it something to do with Rex? Because I did see his car here last night. Well, you always blame Rex. Don't you even care that he's been the one protecting me? Protecting you? From what? Now you really are... St you're frightening me. You always do. This is why I didn't want to tell you, okay? You get hysterical. I am not hysterical. I am very calm, okay? I just want you to tell me what's going on. Someone broke in here last night. The guy that's been stalking me. <laughs> I think he's a little sleepy. Oh, Tommy, Tommy? Huh? Oh. Hey, good morning, Mary. You wearing your hair up? You're the first one to notice, Mr. Jones. Oh, well, it's very becoming. And you're becoming a regular. Cup of coffee to go, right? Like with one sugar? Yeah, right. Well, I think I have it to stay today. I have a few phone calls to make. Is this your paper? <laughs> it's all yours, Mr. Jones. Excuse me, do we know each other? Everybody knows Vincent Jones. Your reputation uh, precedes you. <laughs> and what reputation might that be? Well, that of a shrewd and successful businessman, of course. Thanks for the paper. What you gonna do that for? Well, I think it this morning. Then why'd you bring it up here? I don't know. Decoration? Oh. The bagel's decoration, too? No, you can eat those. Thank you. Sleep all right last night? Kind of fidgety. You looking for me? This is what you wanted, isn't it? Eye for an eye. I can't hear you. Shades of Todd Manning. I can't hear you. What are you trying to say to me? You got the wrong guy, Lieutenant. You got the wrong guy! It's okay. She didn't have any bad dreams about beating up Vincent Jones? Not that I remember. I still feel really bad that I kept that from you. Forget about it, all right? Just stay clear of that guy and we won't have any problems. Fine by me. So, to change the subject... Oh, boy. You know, I've got to get all these hours of field work for my mm -hmm. forensic class and... Uh, and? I was wondering if I could shout at you one of your kids. Not going to happen. Why not? Not going to happen. Because that's business and it doesn't mix well with this. Uh, we do all the time. This is different. Uh, uh, uh. No cell phone, no paper. Fine. Five minutes. Go ahead. Ms. Buchanan, I'm glad I can track you down. I need to see you right away. I I didn't know you were being released last night. Yeah, thought I'd come and take my life back. Sleep my own bed. When was the last time I did that? 
Yeah, that's right. It was right before I was arrested for a murder I didn't commit. Miss me? Of course I did. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I felt that as I was lying alone in our bed. Ron, Todd, don't do this, please. Don't do what? Look, you don't understand. Last night, I wasn't... You weren't what? With Spencer? <laughs> What's the matter, Cat? Got your tongue? It's a pretty simple question. Were you with Spencer last night? Yes or no? Yes. There you see. It's not so difficult, is it? Now get the hell out of my house. Did you hear what I said? Get out now. Come on, Todd, don't be like this. We loved each other once, and I still love you. But you still love me, do you? But you continue to sleep with what's-his-name? The guy that tried to get me killed? You can't prove Spencer did anything. But yes, I'm... I'm with Spencer now. But it doesn't mean that I've stopped caring about you, Todd. Well, care about me somewhere else. You just make me want to puke, you know that? Get out. Okay. I just have to get something. No, whatever you need to get, I'll send to you. The kids are over at Dorian's and they're going to need their clothes for tomorrow. You listen to me now. You are out of your mind if you think I'm going to let Spencer Truman anywhere near my kids. Star and Jack are going to live with me. I'm truly hurt, David. You're also ugly. Next complaint. You know, I really thought we'd gotten through all of this nastiness. You know, I mean, I bailed you out of jail. I offered to help you with this whole Thomas McBain mess. And the first thing you do is run to my ex-wife to try to plot my downfall. I mean, that is very disappointing. I already told you, Spencer, I'm getting out from under. I want my life back. Well, we all want the same things, don't we, David? And if you two had any brain cells to rub together, then you would both keep your mouths shut and let me help. Spencer, I'm entering a plea of guilty. It's over. And I've already told the truth about what I did. You've got no hold over either one of us anymore. Well, I only have two words for you. Bob Buchanan. David, could you give me a minute alone with your brother? I'll be fine. Hey, Dave, um, you know, in spite of all the bad blood between us, I really don't want to see you spend the next 20 years in jail. I mean, I bailed you out, right? I mean, I really am trying to help if you would only let me. That almost sounded sincere. Well, that doesn't mean I'm going soft. And if you have any sincere feelings for both of you, can, and if you truly Save care it, you bastard. I told Bo everything. Creep took off before I had a chance to catch my breath. When were you going to uh, call us in on this, Balsam? After one of you got hurt? Huh? Or worse? I came in now. You're the only one Adriana wants me to talk to about this. Well, I can't do you much good without my badge, can I? So, what do I do? I say you turn that over to John McBain. He's the best cop I know. He'll take care of it for you. Adriana wanted to keep this quiet. Hey, you can trust John, all right? I'll tell you what, you don't try to take this stalker on yourself, though. He's already committed assault, breaking and entering. He's working his way up. You let the police handle it. Hey, look at me. I don't want anything to happen to you, Balsam. You got that? I need to get back to Adriana. Yeah. They need to get you back on as commissioner before this whole town bites it. And I don't care how good McBain is. You're the best cop I know. And best man. This isn't a good time right now. 
It's a perfect time. And I suggest that we leave your boyfriend out of it. So what do you need? We can discuss that when you get here. I'm at the Angel Square Diner. Fifteen minutes? No, it's impossible. I don't believe in impossible. And as this is in everyone's best interest, I know you'll find a way to get here. Unless you want me to offer my invitation again. Say in front of your boyfriend. See you in 15 minutes. Who's that? Oh, you may be able to kick me out of here, but there's no way in hell you're going to take my kids. You got that? Hmm. Surprise you haven't moved in with Spencer already. I told you, they're at Dorian's. You listen to me? I wonder what a judge would say, Blair. You pawning your children off on some relative while you whore it up at the Palace Hotel. I may have failed you, Todd, but I have always been there for our children, and I have custody. For now. Hasn't this family seen enough courts, enough judges? I told you, you can see the kids whenever you want. I want them away from Spencer Truman. No. I'm not Trust going to move in with Spencer. I'm not. I'm telling you that right now. Not now, not ever. Don't make promises you can't keep, Blair. And that's when we found the dead butterfly. Adriana! Oh, wait. How in the world could you not have told me? I was afraid you'd overreact. Overreact? To what? The fact that my daughter's being stalked by a lunatic that you were attacked right here in your very own backyard, as it were? I'm going to fire the security force right away. I mean, Jack and Star were in the house then. And you, you must be traumatized. You said you got hit on the head. Maybe you got a concussion. Mom, please stop it, okay? I was more worried about Rex. He almost drowned trying to protect me. And I'm very glad he didn't drown. But my main concern is you. I see. As long as Rex is on the unsuitable boyfriends list, it's okay if he gets killed. No, of course not, darling. I'm very happy that he was here with you last night. Yeah, right. What do you want me to do? Write it in blood? I will thank him the very next time I see him. Here's your chance. Well, Rex... What in the hell were you thinking, not telling me that my daughter is being stalked by a lunatic? You want one of these? They're really good. Look. Uh, I can't believe they haven't tried to contact us yet. Who? Oh. Child services. Well, it's a little strange they haven't called. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, actually, they um they called this morning. Really? What'd they say? Oh, something about a potential family wanting to meet Tommy. Yeah. When, Marcy? Um, I think it was sometime today, but I told them we were busy. You know, we have so much to do. Busy doing what? I have the day off, Marcy. We have nothing to do. Yes, we have lots of things to do. Michael, we have to go shopping. We have errands to run. Shopping? Yes, shopping. <laughs> do you believe how much of this he drank? Look, he was such a hungry little guy, weren't you? Yes, you were. What shopping, Marcy? We have to go to Save More today. We can go tomorrow. No, we can't go tomorrow. We can't go tomorrow because we have to buy paper towels and then there's Marcy. coffee, you know. We only have instant. You ate instant. So we'll go to the corner store, we'll pick up some coffee, some paper towels. It'll take all of ten minutes. No, we cannot go to the corner store. They always have lines. I hate that they don't have enough people behind the counter and it drives me crazy. Oh, Marcy, this is getting a little... Oh, I, I can't even believe this one. Here, you better take Tommy. Take Tommy. Why? M Mars, Marcy, please... Do you have any shame? You know, I can't even believe that you can possibly show your face in public. So that was my uh, lab partner from my friends' class. I totally forgot I was supposed to meet him for this assignment. Okay. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. So I better go. I'm really sorry. No worries. Say hi to your, uh, your lab partner for me. And my heart belongs to you. See you later. Well, I want to tell. 
Wow, you're packing. That's right. I'm stepping down as commissioner. Yeah, I know. The newspaper said it was evidence of some impropriety, and I know that's not true. No, no, it's not. But I'm not going to say anything about it. <laughs> Who would believe that the, you would frame Todd anyway? I mean, you think Spencer said you have, don't you? <laughs> nice try, Blair. What? But you're not going to get me to say anything, except that I will tell you that this uh, whole Nancy Drew thing that you're doing... It's dangerous. Spencer is not going to buy it, and you're going to end up getting hurt. Yeah, well, I told you that I have to do what I have to do. Otherwise, my life is going to unravel even more than it already is. In fact, it's getting worse by the minute. What happened? Todd's he's talking about uh, suing for custody again. <laughs> Tell him the truth. I can't, Bo. <laughs> How am I going to get Spencer to open up? The only way I'm going to get him to open up is if he thinks that I'm with him. And Todd's never going to go with that. <laughs> so you're doing all this for Manning, but uh, you're pushing him further away in the process, huh? Yeah, I'm doing it for Todd, but I'm also doing it for me. Look, I'm the one that bought Spencer's act. I let him into my life. I let him into my kid's life. And I'm going to make it right. In fact, I actually... Already got some really good information. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Oh, I think you do, Bo. I do, yeah. No. Why? Why don't you. Because I'm not playing by your rules, I'm disobeying. Okay, you can ignore me, but it's really, really good information. I mean, really. All right, I'm fine. Tell me, what is it? David came over to Spencer's hotel suite last night and confessed to killing John McBain's father. Hey, Van, it's me. Uh, call me, please. I want to sue for custody of my children. Full custody. I want to make sure Blair never sees them again, okay? Um... Call me back, please. Thanks. I told Bo everything. You're bluffing, Paige. Am I? Why don't you ask him who delivered Margaret's baby? Why don't you ask him who planted evidence to make it look like he killed Margaret? All right, enough. It doesn't matter what you told Bo. I mean, it's your word against mine, Paige, and my hands are clean. <laughs> it's over for you, Spencer. Between what David and I know, you were going to burn. Did it ever occur to you that your and David's reputations might be an issue? I mean, do you really think anyone's going to take the word of a couple of murderers? Not here, Carson. Not here? I'm sorry, where are my manners? I guess that I'm not supposed to confront a murderer in public, am I? I guess I'm out of here. No, no. You. You are not out of here. You are not out of here until I tell you how much I hate you. I hate you for what you did to my husband. You deprived him of his father. The one person, the one person in his life who was supposed to give him a sense of security and love and support. And guess what? Michael didn't get any of that because of you. You destroyed his family. They have suffered and they have grieved. And do you want to know the worst part of it is? The worst part of it is not because you killed his father, because you're no. a coward. No. It is not enough. I hope that you pay for what you did. You destroyed the McBain family. And you know what? You're never going to suffer half as much as they did. You made them suffer the worst possible pain imaginable. As, as trite as it may sound, my heart goes out to Michael and John and to their mother. It should not have happened. Thomas McBain's death was senseless. It was a tragedy. Too, well, too late, Vickers. Come on, we'll get away from him. Yes. Uh, I'm back at the penthouse. I need to see you. We have some unfinished business to settle. Stop 
Okay, Mom, okay, do not blame Rex for any of this. That's okay, Adrian. No, it's not okay. Rex wanted me to tell you from the beginning about the stalker, but I wouldn't let him. I respect that. I wish he hadn't deferred to you. Well, he did, because he knew how miserable you'd make my life. And what happened to thanking him the very next time I see him? Rex, thank you very much for protecting my daughter. That's what I do. Good. Now, no more procrastinating. We're calling the police right away. I I I'm calling Bo Buchanan directly. Uh, I just got back from seeing him, but he's not going to be around for a while. He's stepping down as commissioner. What? Why? Well, it's kind of a long... Well, never mind. Who has the time? Never mind about that. Who are we going to call? Who are we going to? I left a message for John McBain. Okay. All right. And and I will hire bodyguards to, to watch you, Andre. Yes, 24-7. No, no bodyguards, Mom, please. What? You're making me regret telling you about this. Am I supposed to do nothing when my daughter is being stalked by some madman? No one's going to get near her while I'm around, I promise. I know that I have been ambivalent about your relationship with my daughter. But I realize now that I have to accept the fact that you two have become very close in your special way. And I'm not going to fight it anymore. No, not now when we really have something to fight here. Oh, God, I'm late. I told Carlotta that I'd help her with Jamie this morning. No, you are not going to leave the house. Mom, I am not going to let this jerk keep me from living my life, okay? I'll drive her there myself. All right, but don't let her out of your sight. Please, stay with her. What's up, boss? I need to see you right away. It's about Adriana. Oh, oh, and I'm not at the office yet. I, I, I'm still here at La Boulet. I'm on my way. Vickers confessed to killing Thomas McBain. This is big. Yeah, what are you doing? I'm calling John. No, no, you're not, Bo. No. What are you talking about? Yeah. If Spencer finds out that I'm spying on him, I'll tell him what he'd do. No, no, hey, John has the right to know. No, you're not going to do this. Don't do this to me. You would let Vickers skate on a murder rap just to get back at Spencer? What about Michael and John McBain? Don't they have a right to justice, too? Look, you know that David did it. Use it to get more evidence. Just say that you got it from an anonymous witness. That wouldn't hold up in a court of law. No. We need you to testify. Well, I am not going to do it. Not yet. Now, come on. Just, just keep it quiet for me. Well, not for me, for my kids. Please. Please. You okay? Yeah. How about you? You're pretty worked up there. Well, David hurt you. You know, he hurt you, John, and I'm sorry, but I really had to say something. Please don't be mad at me. Mad at you. Sweetie, I love you for it. Your loyalty, your amazing commitment to the people you love. Why? Why are you looking at me like that for? Marcy, I know you're falling head over heels for this baby, and that's why. No, no, I am not. You think you know me. No. I like you. I do. I like you a lot. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm falling head over heels in love with him, but look at his face. I mean, who wouldn't, right? It's cute. <laughs> but if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, the only reason that I told the caseworker that we couldn't meet with them today was because we have to go shopping. Did I mention it's double coupon day? Double coupon day, huh? Yeah. Well, we better get our butts over to the save now. <laughs> are you ready to go shopping? Yes, you are. We're going to buy you a toy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> what do we get them? Get them uh, chocolate jellyfish. Jellyfish? Mm. In, two, <laughs> <laughs> jellyfish. in the flesh. Oh, he's so cute. Yes, and he's really good, too. He didn't make a peep at lunchtime at all. Aww. You mean John here? No, no, I have a friend. Well, uh, we better get going, okay? See you See later. Nice to meet you. Come on. Yeah, sure. All right. So I'm here. What the hell do you want? 
hate this boat. Seen you forced out? Well, John, it's only temporary. After I uh, prove that I didn't frame Manning, then I'll be back on the force. Still think you should let me beat some sense to that Morgan tenant from Kentucky. Well, Hughes is on that, but uh, thanks anyway. Between the two of us, we're going to find something. Hey, John, you know, you, you, you got enough to think about right now. Still, Bob, if there's anything I can do. There's something that you need to know. Where is it? Where's the satchel with my two million bucks? I have no idea what you're talking about. The two million dollars you promised for saving your life. I hope you got large bills. I don't want to carry a trunk out of here with my back and all. Well, as I recall, the two million dollars was for evidence on Spencer. You're alive because of me. You're out of jail. Alive. That's worth two million dollars. Yeah, I'm alive. But I'm alone. Is that why you called me over here? To keep you company? No, I want to know where my son is. I want you to tell me what Margaret did with him. You give me the two million dollars. I'll tell you. Tell me and I'll give you ten. Damn, why do they always offer to pay more when I'm bluffing? I don't know. If you want to find your kid, you're going to have to talk to Spencer. One minute you are offering David and me the olive branch, and the next minute you're calling us murderers. Oh, if the shoe fits. I know too much. So nice to see you feeling better. It really is. Pray to God you're on a payphone. I'm doing everything just like you told me. Now you're going to take care of my sister like you promised, right? She'll die without that operation. Your sister's life is as good as saved. I don't like lying to the cops, especially about something like that. Even creepier than the usual stuff I deal with. Dead pregnant woman, bodies taken from the morgue. All right, quiet. Look, this might not be a secure line. Now listen, what are you going to do if the cops start to question you further? Mom's the word, I promise. They won't hear the truth from me. Good man. I knew I could count on you. For goodness sake, what did you do? Crawl here? Traffic's a mess. <sighs> Listen, my daughter, Adriana, is being stalked. Her life is being threatened by some sociopathic lunatic. And she refuses to let me hire bodyguards to watch her. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to help me find someone who can watch her without being detected. I know just the guy. Me. Daryl, that's what you've been doing all along, following her. But this isn't to keep her away from her boyfriend. This is to protect her life from a stalker, for goodness sake. And I did not see bodyguard or surveillance expert on your resume. It's the kind of skill you keep on the low. Are you good at it? I know six different ways to kill a man with my bare hands. Have you ever killed someone? Not yet. But I'm open to new experiences. Good. Follow my daughter and protect her from this lunatic. I have to make some phone calls. Excuse me. Nice work. So what was so important that you had to order me around like I'm one of your employees? Well, was it not very gracious of me to lead you to the man who killed McVeigh's father? Your point. I thought of a way that you could thank me for my efforts. What do you want to tell me? I talked to someone who heard Vickers confess to shooting your father. Who was it? Brent. I'll be in touch. Hey, how are you? Is my surprise? What's going on? I am. Uh, I wanted to let you know that the kids and I will be with Dorian's until we find a place of our own. Well, what about the penthouse? Well, it, it, you know, it was Todd's, and now that he's out of the hospital, he uh, he kicked me out. Oh, Blair, I'm so sorry. Listen, uh, 
I mean, you, you don't have to go to Dorian's. You, you and the kids could move in with me. Spencer knows where my son is. He stashed Margaret in Thailand. He probably knows where your kid is. I'm telling you, Spencer's your guy, but you didn't hear that from me. So now that I've been helpful yet again, what do you say? Give me one million. We'll call it even. Forget it. Blair really picked a winner. Yeah, Spencer. And that's going to cost her, but it's nothing compared to what I'm going to do to your brother. A grudge match between you and Spencer? Why do I see all of Landview burning? I'll tell you one thing. When this whole thing's over, only one of you will be left standing. On the next One Life to Live. Barbara, are you going to die? I've got some news about Norman Bates. Are you willing to let Spencer Truman walk just to nail Vickers? I'm the old Todd. He's back. Marry me? 